There are so many brothers and cousins and fathers and sons that work in the fire department. It's a tradition. It's handed down from family member to family member. They weren't going to have that. So it made me, it gave me energy to go back in there to try to do whatever I can to try to find somebody else. Continue working that day. We're doing everything that we have to do to see if we can find people. My brother and I are staying together with one another. At a certain point, I told him I have to go back to my firehouse, see if I can gather information. He goes, all right, I'm going to go look for uh, survivors. My brother winds up being one of the only uh, one of the firefighters that are involved in one of the only rescues that day, a gentleman by the name of Pasquale, was on the seventh floor landing with about 30 other uh, civilians from his office. And when the building collapsed, he was left on an 18 inch by 18 inch piece of concrete with a piece of railing. The whole building disappeared. All those people that were with him disappeared. He was stuck on that railing seven stories up with just a little piece of narrow uh, framework below him so he could not get down. My brother and a couple of the firefighters from Rescue 5 tied a rope off to him and they lowered him down. He's one of the only rescues to come out of the Trade Center after the collapse of both towers. I do remember when I was in the tower running from doorway to doorway and thinking to myself, when I was a child, my mother told me if there's ever an earthquake, you stand in the doorway. I'm thinking, as an adult, when is there going to be an earthquake in New York City? And I got to worry about having this information in the back of my head. From the day, from the morning of the attack of the Trade Center, I kept thinking, stay in the doorway. Just in case any debris falls, the doorway's going to hold. I was in the doorway when the tower collapsed. I don't know that that's what saved my life, that piece of information from my mom and the help from God. I was with 40 other firefighters. Not one of those firefighters I was with came out of that window behind me. The one firefighter from the basement and the four civilians that came up with him were the only people to come out of that window. A miracle that I survived? Absolutely. My relationship with God has been absolutely bonded. There's nothing that anyone could tell me that he does not exist. There are way too many coincidences. My relationship with him has been great. It continues to be great. That night, I come back to the firehouse. I find out there are a couple of guys missing. We don't know where they are. We're assuming that they were killed in the Trade Center. We still have hope that maybe they were alive. We get word that many of the uh, uniforms are missing off the rack and that our guys had run to the firehouse, put on their uniforms, and they're missing. So we have a, a feeling that many of the guys from the firehouse, there are 50 guys that work here, at least half of them are gone. Turns out that a lot of firefighters knew this firehouse was here. They came here to get the gear rather than go to their firehouse and then come back to New York and to the Lower Manhattan. They came to our firehouse. They borrowed our gear. They died in our gear. The guys that were missing were beginning to show up at the firehouse. We started to put together that it wasn't them in the Trade Center, but now it's other firefighters that we can't even identify. We have no idea how to know who they are. Later on, they had to do DNA, DNA testing um, to try to find out who these firefighters were. Later on that night, when I'm leaving my firehouse, I had to walk back to Brooklyn. My closest family is in Brooklyn. My car was destroyed when the Trade Center collapsed. So I walk over the Brooklyn Bridge, and everybody along the way is wishing me luck. Man, you did a great job. Thank you so much. And I have that thousand-mile stare in my eyes, and I'm walking over the bridge, and I'm wearing my fire department gear because there's no way I could part with it at this point. So that night, I decide I have to walk home. And once I get over to Brooklyn, maybe I can call somebody to come pick me up because I have a lot of friends and family I originally born and raised in Brooklyn. Midway over the Brooklyn Bridge, there's a construction worker standing against the railing, and he's just looking at me. He's watching me come over. It's a short gentleman, black construction worker, and he decides to start walking with me. And he's walking side by side with me, and he tells me, um, you know, I was working on a uh, rooftop in Brooklyn, and I could see the whole thing. And I'm going, yeah, it's terrible, you know, so many people. And in my mind, I thought 10,000 people. I said, it's got to be 10,000 people died today. You know, they were, they were murdered. They, they were attacked, and we had no idea that this was coming, so we had no chance. And he's like, you know, well, God has a bigger plan. You know, you, you have to think, this, think that this is God's plan and God's way of doing things. And he made you survive for a reason. You have to tell the story. And, you know, you were there and, and you have to let everyone know about your guys and keep their memory alive and, and help their families. And I says, yeah, you know, this is, this is a long road now ahead of me. This is, 
this is something that I have to do, and I'm fortunate to survive, and, and not one of the guys that perished that day, but I am. I'm going to keep their memory alive, and I'm going to talk to their families. I'm going to tell them that their sons and, their, and that their husbands died heroes. They were, they were running up the stairs when everybody was running out, knowing that they're not going to come home to stay. That's our number one rule in the firehouse. You come home every day. They knew they weren't. They knew they were going up there for the last time. They were nothing was going to stop them when they were watching people jumping from that building. They were ordered to not go up there, and they were going anyway. There was no way that we could stand back and watch people jump. Some people thought the fire department impeded their exit. I said, it was impossible. It was because of us that there was organization, that the chaos came to an organized scene where we were able to evacuate 35,000 people in an hour from the entire World Trade Center area. That is miraculous in itself, in an hour, to evacuate a city's worth of people to get them to safety. People have come up to me and they said, where was God that day? You believe in God? I said, he was everywhere. He was in every single firefighter, every single rescue worker, every single person that put themselves in that building to help save people. 343 firefighters died. Not one of them started the day off in that building. Every one of them came here to help. Every one of them put their lives on the line to save the people and the citizens of New York. So God was everywhere. The fact that 2,790 people died is a shame. And that if we had more time, I think we would have been able to save more people. But God was doing his best to fight the evil that had been put in front of us and every single one of us. So anyway, I'm walking with this gentleman on the bridge and he's discussing this story to me and telling me you have a bigger plan and God had a bigger plan and this is all part of life. This is all something that happens to us. Give it a minute. 